Order. The question is that the report of the Law and Order Committee on the 2008-09 Financial Re Review of the New Zealand Police be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. I understand that the next Financial Review members wish to debate is the Financial Review of the Ministry of Education. Will members please turn to the Education and Science Committee's report. The question is that the report of the uh, Education and Science Committee on the 2008-09 Financial Re Review of the Ministry of Education be noted. Speaker. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Chairman. Uh, Mr Chairman, I think this is a case of... It's really more in sadness and anger as far as the opposition is concerned. I think we've, we've gone through the point with this Minister of Education where we were angry with the Prime Minister for her appointment, where her inadequacies were shown. Uh, I, think, I think it's important to know that um, as Heatley's gone, as Worth has gone, uh, it is our expectation that this minister will at some stage, will at some stage join the group of former ministers. Uh, and sir, I think the Prime Minister has to make up his mind relatively soon uh, as to when he is going to hand out the not achieved to this minister. Uh, and, and one of the one of the one of the areas is as we focus on the different parts of this vote. And one would have expected this minister to be in charge of both parts of this vote as Minister of Education. And we note, we note that effectively half her workload has been stripped from her because of the inadequacies that have been shown and they have been given to Mr Stephen, to Mr. Stephen Joyce. And sir, it, it, is, it, is, it is sad that a Prime Minister has to take half the workload from a front bench minister in the way in the way that the Prime Minister has had to do by taking away from this minister her responsibility for reporting on a very significant part of this vote. We saw the minister at the at the select committee on this on this uh, particular topic, and and I think it, and I think it's fair to say that um, that there has been a minister who's had a worse performance at the select committee previously. Nick Smith, I can remember, but I can remember White Preach, and I can remember Dr. Smith uh, before the select committee, and both of those people knew their subject. They did their homework. They understood. They knew what a vice-chancellor was. They knew what a vote was. They knew how the system was put together. They knew what group special education was because they were responsible for it and they did their homework in a way that this minister just didn't. They would never have put $62 million into national standards in a way that strips money out from making actual change in education. They would, they would never have cut the money from, uh, from support from professional development in the way that this minister has. She's taken $45.6 million out of professional development. No, she hasn't transferred it to literacy and numeracy. She's taken it out of the total available for, taken the to out from the total available for uh, professional development for teachers, $45.6 million over four years. Ten no, nine long years of money going up, and under this minister, the money for professional development has gone down. And that's because we have such a lightweight on the front bench, again, again, someone who is clearly not coping with her job. Someone who is clearly not coping with her job in the way that people have. And I'm sure my colleague will talk about adult and community education. But I am going to schools now who used to have adult and community education, two in the last two weeks, and three if you count a meeting with the principal who came to see me, who say that used to make a real difference to our school. That was something which bonded us with a community. That was something which got adults 
into our school at night and meant that vandals didn't turn up. And what does this minister do? What does this minister do? She cuts it and she says to the schools, no, there's no more money for anti-vandalism. There's no more money to fix up the schools. There's no more money for the overheads that have been lost as a result of it. And by the way, I'm taking $62 million out of the education vote for my national standard. Well, I don't know. When I, when I, when I, went, to, when I went to school, 36 and 26 were 62. I know there's a new approach to numeracy on the part of Anne Tolley, but it's still $62 million that could have been helping kids learn, and she's stolen it. I call Louise Upson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, this is an absolute delight to speak um, about the financial review of the Ministry of Education. Because there is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Mr Chair, to deliver a brighter future for every New Zealand child. And I'm proud, I'm proud to be working with a minister who has the courage to take the step needed to do that. So before the election, National had promised to deliver national standards and in December, just before Christmas 08, we passed the legislation that would see Under national urgency. standards in every school Under and urgency. also legislation to make sure that more of our young students actually attended school. Now I'm going to focus on the issues, Mr Chair, which is the, the important things in education that are being delivered by the Ministry of Education, because this government is determined to do better for the one in five children who currently leave school after 10 years unable to read, write and do maths. That's a disgrace and that side of the House is unwilling to own that failure. One in five. You don't like it and you won't listen. We recognise that a stand a strong foundation in literacy and numeracy is vital. That is the one priority and that's what the Ministry of Education has been delivering. It's fantastic news. We need our children to be able to read, write and do maths. And unfortunately, Mr Malley doesn't believe they need to be able to read, write and do maths, which is a great disappointment to this side. So our priority is national standards. They're simply signposts. They describe which year one to eight children what they should be able to achieve and by when. Yep. Teachers will assess. Order, order, order. Sorry to the member. 